Good morning everyone. I am Shum Galra and I am here to give a presentation on the topic of pollution prevention and treatment using nanotechnology. So basic agenda of a presentation which includes an introduction, more efficient resources and energy consumption, pollution detection and sensing, water treatment which includes uh, absorption of pollution and nanoparticles, nanofiltration, magnetic nanoparticles, uh, degradation of uh, pollutants and zero violent irons. Further it, further it is defined as a soil and groundwater remediation, environment risk and a summary. Nanotechnology. So in introduction, environmental technology is considered to play a key role in the shaping of current environmental engineering and science as nanoscale has simulated the development and the use of our novels and cost effective technologies for the remediation, uh, pollution detection and catalysis. Yet there is a, also a wide debate about the safety of nanoparticles and their potential impact on a environmental and biota, especially the new field which is described as a nanotechnology. Uh, nanotechnology has received a lot of attention in these for a particular last few from a last few years. Then the, another point is describing as the, there is a huge hope that nanotechnology applications and products will lead to a cleaner and healthier environment. Maintaining a re and maintaining and re-improving the quality of water, air, soil, so that the earth will be able to support a human and other life sustainably, are the one of the greatest and greatest challenges to our time. As both the quantity and the quality possesses a significant threat to the well-being of a people, especially in uh, developing or uh, developed countries. As the picture shows a genuine face of a nanotechnology as a, it's showing the two faces one is showing the advantages and opportunities other is showing a risk and disadvantages as the first point indicates a material efficiency material efficiency includes the replacement of a toxic material from the process as we remove the toxic material from the process it shows uh, us uh, unseen effects like a unwanted uh, ch change in a gesture of a process and a color and coloring of a process Another is another point is the uh, energy efficiency. We require uh, less energy in the nanoparticle processes. On the other side, when we use a uh, less energy, it's showing a uh, unwanted uh, unwanted effects on the process. The third one is the uh, mobility. Uh, when a uh, high mobility particles are uh, high mobility particles are needed for the efficient groundwater remediation, but at the same time. Uh, the particle will render uh, more difficult to remove during a water treatment. Uh, uh, and other one is a toxicity. The toxicity of uh, some nanoparticles can be used for a water disinfection where killing of a micro microorganism is intended. Whereas uh, some properties with the nanoparticles eventually enter the environment which cannot be tolerated. Uh, another one is the catalytic activity. Catalytic activity of uh, nanoparticles can be advantageous when we use for the degradation of pollutants but can in, can't induce a toxic response for the cell of a nanoparticles another is a sorption capsi capacity uh, in the when we require a high sorption capacity of a certain nanoparticles for the removal of a organic and inorganic pollutants on the uh, on the same time it shows a property uh, which is uh, mobilize the pollutants in the environment uh, another one is a cell uh, cell uptake, which is a used for the medical uses. On the uh, having a disadvantage is a eco toxicity that is uh, uh, making a toxic in the environment and uh, harmful for a uh, in a harmful for a environment. Further, it is a functionalized. Uh, uh, in many engineering nanoparticles are functionalized. They are a different surface activity for uh, particles or uh, for many applications. So next is more efficient resources and energy consumption. The implementation of a green chemistry principle for the production of a nanoparticles and for a nanotechnological application leads to a decrease in a waste generation, less hazardous chemical synthesis, improved catalysis and finally a safer chemistry. Nanomaterials can be substituted for the conventional material that require a more raw material and a more energy intensive to produce. Uh, environment uh, to produce or non known to be a uh, environmental harmfully so, uh, th in this uh, nano catalysis can be used at a much lower temperature than a conventional catalysis therefore a uh, less energy 
uh, input required. The capacity of a um, nano cat uh, catalyst at a room temperature open the way for a broad applications of a nano materials in a chemical engineering, chem in including a chemical engineering using a, to produce a uh, products. For example, uh, uh, nanotechnology can be reduced energy cost is a nano material coating on ships which are expected to be a realizer fuel savings. Nanotechnology may also transform our energy production and storage by providing an alternative to the current practices. Last, uh, nanoparticles can increase the storage capacity of a batteries and a rechargeable batteries which are used in a flat screen. They reduces the amount of a heavy metal. Good morning everyone. My name is Nikesh Kannake and I will be continuing the presentation from here on. Uh, I'll be discussing about pollution detection and sensing. Various nanostructured materials have been explored for the use in sensors for the detection of different compounds. An example is silver nanoparticle array membranes that can be used as flow through Raman scattering sensors for water quality monitoring. The particular properties of carbon nanotubes make them very attractive for the fabrication of nanoscale chemical sensors and especially for electrochemical sensors. A majority of sensors described so far use CNDs as a building block. Upon exposure to gases such as NO2, NH3 or O3, the electrical resistance of CND changes dramatically, induced by charge transfer with the gas molecules or due to physical absorption. The possibility of a bottom-up approach makes the fabrication of fabrication compatible with silicon microfabrication process. The connection of CNT with enzymes establishes a fast electron transfer from the active side of the enzyme through the CNT to an electrode. In many cases, enhancing the electrochemical activity of the biomolecules. In order to take advantage of properties of CNTs, then they need to be properly functionalized and immobilized. CNT sensors have been developed for glucose, ethanol, sulfide and sequence specific DNA analysis. Trace analysis of organic compounds, example for the drug Clofenzyme has also been reported. Nano immunomagnetic labeling using magnetic nanoparticles coated with antibodies specific to a target bacterium have been shown to be useful for rapid detection of bacteria in Water treatment. Clean water is a requirement for all property functioning societies worldwide, but is often limited. New approaches are continually being examined to supplement traditional water treatment methods. These need to be lower in cost and more effective than current techniques for the removal of contaminants from water. Nanotechnolo nanotechnological approaches are considered. Here, following application areas will be covered. Nanoparticles use as potent adsorbents. In some cases combined with magnetic particles to ease particle separation. Nanoparticles used as catalysts for chemical or photochemical destruction of contaminants. Nano sized zero valent iron used for the removal of metals and organic compounds from water and nano filtration membranes. Good morning everyone. My name is Harshit Sonparote and I am going to continue the presentation with the topic Approaches for Soil and Groundwater Remediation. The use of nanoscale zero valent iron for Groundwater remediation represents the most widely investigated environmental nanotechnological technique. Granular zero-valent iron in the form of reactive barriers has been used for many years at numerous sites all over the world for the remediation of organic and inorganic contaminants in groundwater. As we can see that in figure number 2A. With nanoscale zero-valent iron, two possible techniques are used. First, immobile nanoscale zero-valent iron is injected to form a zone of iron particles adsorbed on the aquifer solids as we can see that in figure number 2b. In second technique, mobile nanoscale zero-valent iron is injected to form a plume of reactive iron particles that destroy any organic contaminant that dissolve from a dense non-aqueous phase liquid source in the aquifer as we can see that in figure number 2c. So with this technique, the formation of pollutant plume is inhibited. The successful results of field demonstration using nanoscale zero-valent iron have been published, with reported reduction in TC of up to 96% after injection of 1.7 kg of nanoparticles into the groundwater. A larger test was conducted where 400 kg of nanoscale zero-valent iron was injected and significant reductions in TCE soil concentration of more than 80% was observed and dissolved concentrations between 57 to 100% were observed. To date, approximately 30 projects are underway in which nanoscale zero-valent iron is used for actual site remediation. Whereas most research using nanoscale zero-valent iron has been devoted to groundwater, much less has been pu published about soil remediation. These studies have mostly been done in soil slurries and efficient removal of poly 
aromatic hydrocarbon by nanoscale zero valent ion have been reported for pcbs a removal of only about 40% was attained caused by the very strong adsorption of pcb to the soil matrix and limited transfer to the nanoscale zero valent ion particles nanoscale zero valent ion particles have been uh, used to immobilize chromium in chromium ore processing residue because the iron particles have a strong tendency to aggregate and adsorb on surface of minerals much effort has been directed toward methods to disperse the particles in water and render them mobile in approach water soluble starch was used as a stabilizer and in another approach hydrophilic carbon and polyacrylic acid delivery vehicles were used modified cellulose sodium sodium carboxymethyl cellulose cmc was used to form highly dispersed nanoscale zero valent ion and also been several polymers have been tested and found to be very effective in this stabilized form the nanoscale zero valent ion was up, was up to 17 times more reactive in degradation trichloroethene than non stabilized material however for other stabilizing agents a decrease in reactivity of up to 9 to 10 fold was observed to deliver the nanoscale zero valent ion to the oil water interface in the dense non aqueous phase liquid contamination a copolymer was used to increase colloid stability and at the same time increase phase transfer into the organic phase so now i am going to talk about environmental risk there are two aspects that come under environmental risk first is behavior in the environment and second is ecotoxicology when we talk about behavior in the environment the use of nanoparticles in environmental application will will inevitably lead to the release of nanoparticles into the environment assessing their risk in the environment requires an understanding of their mobility bioavailability availability toxicity and persistence whereas airborne particles and inhalation of nanoparticles have attracted a lot of attention much less is known about the possible exposure of aquatic and terrestrial life to nanoparticles in water and soils nanoparticles agglomerates rapidly into larger aggregates or are contained within other materials for example polymers aggregation of carbon nanotubes added as a suspension to filtered pond water has also been reported most nanoparticles in technical applications are functionalized and therefore studies using pristine nanoparticles may not be relevant for assessing the behavior of the actually used particles so very little is known to date about the influence of functionalization on the behavior of nanoparticles in the environment when we talk about ecotoxicology a consistent body of evidence shows that nano sized particles can be taken up by a wide variety of mammalian cell type and are capable to cross the cell membrane and become internalized the uptake of nanoparticles is size dependent most of the toxicological studies have been carried out with mammalian cells and therefore were carried out in a cell culture medium containing a mixture of proteins and other biological compounds so in this medium nanoparticles are coated with proteins and have a negative surface charge irrespective of the charge of the present particles results from such studies therefore cannot be directly transferred to environmental conditions so ecotoxicological studies show that certain nanoparticles will have affect will definitely affect on organisms on environment at least at elevated concentrations the next step toward an assessment of the risk of nanoparticle in the environment will therefore be to estimate the exposure to the different nanoparticles so at last i would like to summarize the presentation this presentation was intended to give an overview of the various aspects of nanotechnology and the environment mainly looking at it from the side of applications rather than from the risk side it should have been clear that nanotechnology in general and nanoparticles in particular will have important impacts on various fields of environmental technology and engineering however we should always keep in mind that nanotechnology has a genus phase and that each positive and desired property of nanoparticles could be a problematic under certain conditions and pose a risk to the environment a careful weighing up of the opportunities and risk of nanotechnology with respect to their effects on the environment is therefore much needed so with this i would like to end the presentation thank you so much possibilities are endless please go green thank you so much